that we're making for LG, I'm looking to make an additional page on the website for those videos. So those videos will be separate than the class videos. And we want to try to end the, the electrical one um, so we can get more deeper into the sealed system and show you guys some more things about sealed system. Um, this is an Electrolux refrigerator. I know Brandon was doing a KitchenAid one and I don't have that particular diagram. Um, but there were some things that I wanted to talk about boards and Brandon said well go ahead and, and you know just continue doing some of the stuff that he was doing and uh, I want to talk about this board and if I get the Electrolux one I will I will add the KitchenAid one uh, another day we do a class um, so this is the Electrolux one. I sent you guys a link to Electrolux website to download it if you wanted to download it, have a copy. I cropped it a little bit. I know some of the words are a little bit hard to read, but I do have it in another window I can open up. But I, in this program, it allows me to draw over it so I can point a few things out. Um, Adrian, I think it was you who asked on Saturday um, was the board separated by voltage? I think you said some. Was it you that asked that question? I uh, no, no, no. I think that was uh, somebody else uh, asking the uh, the question. It no. was you or Trinity. I do remember it was one of the guys that I see regular on the Saturday classes. Trinity. I think it was Trinity. I think it was Trinity. Okay. Well, if you look at this board. Um, they definitely do separate this control board by voltages um, and I'm just going to highlight it here that we got what we call the DC side DC voltage and the AC side um, the it's nice for um, knowing whether a component has AC or DC volts but it doesn't show you exactly like in real life how it appears on the board there is another picture which I'll bring up in a minute but if we draw a line straight down this board all the way down everything on the left here would be low voltage and it would either be 5 volts or 12 volts DC as you can see by some of these readings right here 5 volts DC uh, 12 volts 5 volts uh, and and so on and we'll, we'll go over them in a minute so everything else here on the right hand side is going to be high voltage or or supply voltage like 120 volts coming in from the wall um, when you're looking at a diagram I know the KitchenAid one was a good example of how do I know if it's a low voltage component or it's a component that uses 120 volts usually that can be found that if the component goes back to the power cord from the board, and I'll give you an example in a minute, when it gets power from the board, okay, let's see something if we have a thermistor chart here. Let's talk about that. Uh, There's a voltage drop, I believe. Um, I think it's here. I can't zoom in on it with my finger I have to zoom in here okay I see some information here I want to point out so if we look here and we looked at uh, freezer thermistor we're looking for freezer evaporator thermistor right here number 39 is the test okay so if you're going into diagnostics this refrigerator has diagnostics built into the board it's going through the test when you get the test 39 it's testing that thermistor out. Activates automatically means you don't have to turn it on and off. You, when it goes to that test, it's already testing. UI means user interface. This is the display on the door that you press, you know, temperature up and down and everything. It shows a temperature sensed. Oh, I'm sorry. UI shows temperature sensed by freezer evaporator thermistor pass if within 10 degrees of temperature measured with a gauge at evaporator thermistor location OP if open or SH if it's shorted now 
if a thermistor is open or shorted, a lot of times you might have that already on the board when you walk into the customer's house. Sometimes they only show up. How would you check that with a meter? If you wanted to check that with a meter, how would you check yeah. that? Frequency? Frequency. You would check in a frequency. So you'd have to have a meter that has the ability to check frequency. I have this exact meter, and I like it because it does so much for so little. It's like a $35, $40 meter, but it has a capacitor, tensor, it's got ohms. But right here, it's got HZ, which is hertz. And if you can see, my mouse is around it. That's the hertz for the frequency. And I think it's like 200 and something, 240 hertz or something like that is what's supplied to that unit. And you're like, well, what does that mean? Well, coming off this board, there's a frequency, there's AC voltage, and there's DC voltage. The AC voltage is here. The DC voltage is here. If you're checking it at the board, it's the same thing as the compressor control. Uh, signal down here is 12 volts so I'm gonna put my red meter lead on which color wire uh, on the board right here if I'm right here and I'm gonna put my meter and say okay I want to know if the main board is telling this inverter board to tell the compressor to run I'm gonna check voltage I'm gonna put my meter to DC volts and I'm gonna put my red meter lead on which wire J412 Okay, but that's on the main board. I'm I'm on the inverter board here, at the compressor, not at the. It main would be. It, it would be the red and um, gray, I think. Well, you got a red and a black well, you wire. You need a DC ground, right? Well, we got a red and a black wire here. And it, yes, that's exactly. I barely can read it. Read. Okay, well I can't I can I can show you on the other one I can't draw on it. Let me bring the other one back up. So if we look at at this compressor, you got a red and a black wire at the compressor, right? Correct. Okay, so that one going into the compressor is going into the inverter board. Now, someone said J four twelve, which is correct. That is one of the wires do you put your black or red meter lead on j4 question for tunas for how do you pronounce your name for oh, yes. so the only uh, you, <laughs> yes you are right sir for okay tuna. so yeah uh because i was trying to connect from the trainings here i thought i was wrong because yesterday yes i was working in the samsung uh compressor and it was completely dead i started checking the 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 terminals the the pin and all pins were had continuity so i was mixing up i was i thought maybe all in linear compressor using inventor they have only one widening so now i know it's only lg the LG, rest thing LG, depends on the manufacturer yeah lg is the only one that uses the linear compressor the samsung the reason why they have those windings like that is they can make the compressor run at different speeds. They sort of pulse the windings as they go around. It go it goes from one winding to the other as it goes around, and and that's how that's how it controls the speed of that compressor. So um, the linear doesn't have a motor; it's just a solenoid. So you just have to make sure you, you're familiar with it. And one way to really tell is you look at the plug on the motor. The Samsung doesn't have a relay and overload. It looks like that LG plug, but you will see three wires on the plug when it connects to the compressor. So even if you even if you didn't know, yes. like the refrigerator didn't say LG or Samsung on it, and you looked at that plug, that gray plug that I showed in the video, um, and it had only two wires, it's most likely a linear compressor like the one on the right. If it had three wires on that plug, it's going to be a VCC. If it has a relay and overload, it's a regular compressor. So, okay. um, after that, I'm probably just going to wrap this up for tonight because there is so much about this diagram I can talk about and I can go forever. And 
Uh, my food was delivered just as this class uh, started, so I haven't had a chance to eat yet. Unless anybody, uh, I, I'd be more than happy to entertain any other questions you guys have, though, before we end the class. Yeah, I got a question. Um, what's the uh, what's the typical amp draw on those linear compressors? I just remember a while back I did a job. Uh, the guy had the fridge unplugged for like 24 hours, so he had kind of got rid of all my clues, but... I seen that it was only pulling like 0.5 amps. Is that typical on a um, you remember on those linear compressor? Remember, you can't really check amperage to see if the compressor is running properly. You have to go by the frequency and the voltages. Okay. Um, remember, it's not a motor; it's a solenoid. So again, it's turned mm. on and off, pulsing the comp pulsing that piston up and down. You're not going to get a regular amperage draw like you would on like a, a regular compressor. And then if you did a VCC compressor like the Samsung okay. one, you could get somewhat of an amperage draw, but you have to be between the inverter and the compressor, not going into the inverter. And the second thing was is that, remember, on a VCC compressor, the letters VCC means variable, capacity compressor it means it changes speed like a ceiling fan so you have to make sure uh -huh. you're on maximum voltage to check the amperage so again amperage tests on any of those compressors are really not good tests the only one that you're really going to do uh, an, an amperage test to see if the compressor is working properly is if you were checking the standard compressor on the left hand side here the standard ones yeah, the VCC and the linear, okay. you, you know, if the compressor is running at a variable speed, you don't know what speed it's running at. You don't know what amperage draw you're supposed to have. You could say, my amperage is high or my amperage is low. It, it's really not going to tell you a lot. So you can check voltages to these linear boards and, and inverter boards. I'm sorry, let me not say linear, but inverter boards. You can ohm out the windings, and if the compressor is running, and you have proper voltages to these boards, uh, you're going to have to go into the system, and now you're going to have to check pressures on the system. 